His Excellency Mr. Yu Kin Mong Kyo, Distinguished Minister of Industry, Republic of Myanmar, my distinguished colleague in the Union Council of Minister, Susiyar Chaudhary, Anup Madhavan, Rajan Navani, Subhash Goyal, and Bhishma ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today is indeed a historic day whereby we are bringing <coughs> Indo-ASEAN relationship to a new level. Indo-ASEAN relationship has a deep tradition of history, heritage, culture, and civilization. And therefore, if I have to describe the momentum which we need to push, it must be marked by three C, culture, commerce, and connectivity. The story of Ramayana and Mahabharat are a part of our psyche. They are also a part of the psyche of ASEAN countries. In fact, I always remember whenever I go to the Bangkok airport, the great statue of Samudra Manthan being installed at the airport, I find a resonance of my own values at the Bangkok airport. Lord Buddha, born in Nepal, got awakening in my, in Bodh Gaya, in my state of Bihar, unleashed a profound movement of compassion and love, which found great resonance in all the ASEAN countries. And Subhash was just mentioning about tourism. I think this tourism is not tourism simpliciter. This tourism is always a constant discovery of values, which has really cemented the bond between Indo-ASEAN countries. I think we need to remember this heritage because as we always say, you cannot undo history. I would add, you cannot undo heritage as well. And this blending of the history and the heritage with the powerful values of civilization and culture would always continue to reinforce the bonds between our two countries, namely Indo-ASEAN relationship. This offers a challenge and also an opportunity. How can we concretize this relationship into a profound understanding of trade relationship, of meaningful economic relationship, and above all, the most important, empowering the people of these countries. If that perspective is kept in mind, I'm sure we have a lot to offer and we have also a lot to learn from these countries. Subhash, I'm surprised that some of the ASEAN countries are still left from the ambit of e-visa <coughs> that I need to look into. I think at the government level, Anup, you are also there. We have to push that some of those countries which are left from e-visa, maybe Myanmar or maybe other countries, we have to ensure that they also come in that canvas. How I see the present scenario? My Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, has been advocating great stress on meaningful, deepening Indo-ASEAN relationship. He attended the 15th summit in Philippines, also the East Asia Summit. But what is more important is that today's our trade relationship is roughly in the realm of $70 billion. How can we increase it? Yes, we are involved in a great initiative of having a regional comprehensive economic partnership. We expect that to be concretized by this year end. Because this regional comprehensive partnership in the economic field, ASEP, uh, will surely create an enormous platform of greater reciprocity. That's how I see it. As an IT minister, I would like to highlight the digital component of our relationship. 
and how we can look forward to. You know, many of the speakers talked about digital <coughs> India. Digital India is a profound program to transform India and empower ordinary Indians with the power of technology. That is digital India. <clears throat> and it has a very declared mission to bridge the digital divide between digital have and digital have nots. Above all, to bring in digital inclusion <coughs> based upon technology which is affordable, inclusive, and development. That is the rationale of digital India. And digital India, skill India, startup India, smart cities are all working in unison to make India a technology empowered society. We are doing a lot of things in that. I need not spell out all. Some brief concrete features I'd like to highlight today where we can work together. The first obviously is the infrastructure. We are linking 250,000 gram panchayats, cluster of villages by optical fiber network. We have already connected more than 100,000 and by the end of this year or the beginning of next year we hope to complete it. We have a good digital connection to Singapore as a Singapore hub. We have proposed a hub through Myanmar, extending up to Indonesia. We are also open to suggestion to further have digital connectivity via the Bangladesh route. In terms of digital infrastructure, we can work a lot. But the larger issue is digital inclusion, which is creating services and also creating opportunities and resultant in power. But ladies and gentlemen, what is the digital profile of India? In a population of 1.30 billion, India is home to 1.21 billion mobile phones, out of which 400 million are smartphones. India has done exceedingly well in exciting innovation of digital identity of Indians by in the shape of Aadhaar, Again, a low-cost technology, completely safe and secure with due regard to privacy, backed by a parliamentary law. And today, 1.19 billion Indians are on Aadhaar. 99% of the adult population today are on Aadhaar. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, Aadhaar is a digital identity to supplement the physical identity. Now, and plus we have 500 million internet, again rising and thriving. We came with ideas to empower ordinary Indian, banking the unbanked, funding the unfunded, skilling the unskilled, <coughs> securing the unsecured by the application of digital technology. We opened nearly 300 million plus bank accounts to the poor under perfect. We link that bank account with Aadhaar, verifiable digital identity. Link that to the mobile phone and it started delivering welfare measures related to the bank account of the poor. More than 300 services have been delivered and we have saved 57,000 crores, 9 billion plus dollars, which used to be pocketed by fake or ineligible claimants. <clears throat> digital governance brings in good governance. Then there is other forms of e-governance. Our Prime Minister said, I want governance to be available in the palm of ordinary Indian. Today we came with Umang app, 164 government services ride on that. At the click of a button you can get it. E-hospital, e-scholarship. Digital literacy program of making nearly 60 million rural household families digitally literate in the coming two years. All these are profound program of digital inclusion. We have unleashed a great program of common service centers. 270,000 common service centers today operate from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, giving 300 digital delivery of services in which one million 
young men and women were 40,000 are women entrepreneurs out of that, making Aadhaar cards, banking, insurance, land records, Indira Gandhi Open University. Again, and as a law minister, I have also involved them in DG law to give free legal aid to the deprived and poor people. And the last in this connection is BPO in the small towns of India. And I'm very proud of that initiative of this government. In the last two years, we started. Today, we have got BPO operating in Kohima, in Umphal, in Dibrugarh, in Guwahati, in Patna, Samastipur, Kanpur, Allahabad, and most of all, Srinagar, Badgam, Sopor, which are affected by so-called terrorist people, apart from all over the country. Because we wanted to rescue digital process from Delhi, Mumbai, Gurgaon, Pune, Hyderabad, Mangalore, no grudge against them. But let digital movement become a mass movement. And based upon that, we have come with the idea of digital economy, raising India to a $1 trillion economy. Giving contribution of 20% plus GDP in the whole process of creating new India. And creating nearly 20 million direct and 40 million indirect jobs. That's how we are viewing app. The minister from Myanmar was talking about automobile. As an electronic minister, I must convey to you, India is becoming a big center of electronic manufacturing. In the last three years, India has set up only 108 mobile manufacturing factory. There was only two when our government has come to power. Automobile electronics, defense electronics, medical electronics, and other forms of solar power, panels, etc. Because I see digital electronic manufacturing as an adjunct to larger narratives of digital India. And we are also involved in a great process of civilian engagements, MyGov, which Jagdish talked about. What is MyGov? Young people of India engage with the Prime Minister also with me, give their ideas for governance, for development. This whole narrative of digital India, what is the start of India? A mandate to all the banks that you have to fund at least one scheduled caste or scheduled tribe, young men and women, to become an entrepreneur. Therefore, Indian digital economy, from services, to e-commerce, to digital payment, to digital delivery of services, all are rising. How can we share those ideas in capacity building? in ASEAN countries. India is a leading country in soft power, uh, software. Many of the ASEAN countries are leading countries in hard, hardware. How can we supplement, complement each other? And one thing I wish to make it very clear with all sense of responsibility. Indian IT companies do not go to display jobs. They create jobs, create capacity building. That is their record in 200 cities of 80 countries, and that will be their record also in ASEAN countries when they will further expand. In capacity building, in local languages, in high-end technology. And we, are, we should not be worried at all about new technology, whether it's IoT or machine learning or artificial intelligence. Because ultimately, these technologies are only going to empower ordinary people. And that is our Indian experience. And if I can quote in one line, Indians first observe technology, then they adopt it, then they start enjoying it, and then they become empowered. And this great expansion of the smartphone revolution happening in the hinterland of India is a profound example as to how technology empowers common people. And I'm sure the other form of technology is also going to empower. With this larger scenario, I think there is great scope to work more. One more aspect I would like to highlight in this connection is the great empowerment of our farmers by application of digital technology. The soil health card is becoming a big movement. It's the new innovation of India finding great resonance 
where soil health card is available to ordinary farmer, which clearly defines the health of your soil. Have you over fertilized itself yourself? Are you only insisting upon crops which has become unproductive in your soil? Then digital market enam for farmers. Today, 400 markets are available linked digitally for our farmers and farmers from Puducherry are selling their products to North India and vice versa. I think these enormous platforms create extraordinary opportunity for sharing, for mutual benefit, and also empowerment of common. That is the larger narrative I would like to share before this August audience today. Yes, conventional trade must go on in the field of merchandise, in the field of services. And what is important is technology has a very uncanny habit of creating not only opportunity, but also destroying barriers. Today, we need to revisit our understanding of services. Because at a click of a button, sitting in Delhi, I can read Latin America, or Myanmar, or Bangkok, or as the case being, to Manila. In this light, it is important for us to be a little more flexible, a more understanding. I think India's experience of smart cities, we wish to share with Myanmar, which the Honorable Minister talked about. We wish to share with other countries. Because the unique opportunity which India brings on the table, is not only the enormity of its people, one billion plus, extraordinary diversity of location, of environment, from severe cold to great hot. Yet, in all this, how can we thrive and make opportunity for a better living of our common people? I think if those ideas are taken into account, I am not going to the larger narratives of technology. Today, I was focusing more upon vision, but I'd like to compliment the Ministry of Commerce for organizing this interaction, for having a meaningful dialogue to strengthen our relationship, which is time-tested, and as I said, shared by history, supported by culture, invigorated by our civilization heritage. Thank you. Namaskar. Jai Hind.